please join us as we sing our first hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Hello and welcome to our service of morning prayer today, Sunday the 8th of November. All the words you need are on the screen in front of you and you are invited to join in with the words that are in bold. Let us just take a moment to settle ourselves before we begin our worship today. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 91 Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, My refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, yet it shall not come near you. 
your eyes have only to behold, to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Most High your stronghold. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because they have set their love upon me, therefore will I deliver them. I will lift them up, because they know my name. They will call upon me, and I will answer them. I am with them in trouble. I will deliver them and bring them to honour. With long life will I satisfy them, and show them my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their paths, and meets them in every thought. This is the word of the Lord. I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Remembrance Sunday draws human beings together once a year, in a special way, even when they cannot meet. Remembering and giving thanks is important for our souls. Clapping, as we did in the spring to remember essential workers, helps us, as well as remembering, also to think through our values, what's important to us and what we should strive for. Some who remember that today will bring to mind recent or not so recent memories of active service for their country. Some will remember a loved one who made the ultimate sacrifice. Many of us will try to imagine what others are feeling. We are all connected to the First and Second World Wars and more recent conflict through our own family history, the stories of our from our local community, or because of the long-term impact of those wars on our society and the world we live in today. Locally, during the First World War in Gosforth, very few families escape loss. I have no personal experience of armed conflict, nor were my parents old enough to serve in the Second World War. However, both my grandfathers saw active service. My great uncle served as a sailor on the Royal Navy aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious. He was bombed and badly burned. He jumped into the sea and was rescued. He suffered for years from his injuries and we went as children to visit him in a mental hospital. His state of mind was a subject that quietly occupied my grandmother. I remember my grandparents found Remembrance Sunday upsetting. It was too emotional for them. They seemed glad when it was all over. My mum's dad had seen things he did not want to share. Memories that were unspeakable, experiences that could not be articulated, and he was almost silent on the subject. It seemed silence was the only language that could somehow do justice to the feeling, the memory, the imagination. So maybe silence is the true language of remembrance. The recognition that what matters is, is so much more than we can ever say, and so we might as well be quiet. I think of the most moving moments of the Royal British Legion's annual Festival of Remembrance is when, in the Royal Albert Hall, those thousands of poppies are released, drifting down from the ceiling silently to fall on those who stand and remember. The silence of Remembrance Sunday is a recognition that in order to do justice to what ha has happened, to do justice to the cost of war, it's sacrifice and pain. 
we do not need to tell another story or sing another song. Rather, we need to be silent together. But we also know that the power of remembrance is that while it connects us with sadness to the past, it also inspires us to hope. As we remember or try to imagine those terrible events and such unspeakable suffering, we honour those lost by pledging to be more humane, more ready to listen, more passionate about human rights and more earnest in our quest for social justice in our own society and in the world. We remember not to allow the past to capture us, but to build us up for the future. We remember not only the, and to honour the fallen, but to raise our hearts and to promise to live lives worthy of their sacrifice. Jesus knew the power of remembrance when he took a loaf of bread, blessed it and gave it to his friends saying, this is my body and gave them the wine to drink saying, this is my blood and told them to remember him in this way. In doing this, he, he reminded them of hope for the future. He is saying, think about me and my self-giving for you and know that you are forgiven. Remember the bread and the wine. Remember the cross as a sign of that God's justice and mercy will prevail in the end. It is our duty this day to ensure that those who in the course of peace have given and continue to give their life, their health and their youth, all those are honoured and remembered. Today we remember the courage, the comradeship, the ingenuity, the spirit of working together for a common cause, the plan together for a better world that would come with peace. We remember the carnage, the colossal horrors of war, the many women who became widows, many people who never knew their fathers or their mothers. We remember the loved ones that were lost, the wisdom wasted, the minds that are still pained by memories. We remember the families grieving because of recent wars and conflict. It was Jesus who spoke those much quoted words. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Today we remember and honour their memory. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We have come together to remember all those lost in world wars and conflicts, past and present, those who have been injured or disabled through war, those who have lost homes and security through conflict, those who have lost loved relatives in wars, those who face danger and take risks for peace. And we meet to commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. This morning we ask God to comfort those who still grieve, those who still remember past sacrifices, and ask his help to guide us in building a just and peaceful community for all. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Together we say, we will remember them. When you go home, 
tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, may God give peace. O God of many names, God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memories we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, we may, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule who was alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please join us with our final hymn, O God, our help in ages past. Shelter for 
sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time like a May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.